Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Shed Reyes from CVI 2022. I'm really privileged today to be with Dr. Stefan uh, Renfett. He is from Emory University, and he's a CTO operator when I talk about uh, CTO. Stefan, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, Shady. Yeah. So, um, so today you have a session. Yep. You didn't present yet, but you're going to present. Yep. It's kind of a debate, almost, yeah, about I the challenge of CTO trials that are done and how this is supplemented the, the guidelines. That's actually right. The question they're asking me is that, is there any other uh, indication than symptoms to open a CTO? And, um, and, the, and I understand why people are asking the question. Right now, the, the, in the general principles that a lot of people internationally have agreed around is that we should open CTOs mostly for, for symptoms because it's what we have the best data. But the yeah. problem is not because we don't have the data that there's not plausibility for any other benefits that have been documented in observational trials. I see. And so now symptoms is one, but two also, what kind of tools we should be using to evaluate patients who are candidate and going to feel better after CTO intervention. But now you're 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 alluding to to what I think. So first of all, invariably all CTOs are are ischemic. They and most of the data so far support treating people who have ischemia. And if you look at the uh, appropriateness criteria. Uh, published in 2017, even an asymptomatic patient who have moderate to high or a, a, a ischemia, level of ischemia, or have an FFR less than 80, it's going to be, it's not an inappropriate or not likely appropriate, but could be appropriate. So just thinking about ischemia is something that you might want to decide to treat. The other indication for which CTO-PCI is, is, is worth considering is treatment of LV dysfunction. There's plenty of observational data to show that actually if you're treating someone who has a low EF, can improve the EF. Of course, we don't have the randomized trial comparing uh, using CTO-PCI in low EF versus medical therapy alone, but the best data we have so far was observational data. Another subgroup will be obviously the patients who are uh, to improve tolerance to future events. So you've, you have, we know that if you have a CTO in your coronaries and unfortunately you block another artery because you have a STEMI, your mortality is up to 30%. Correct. So you'd think that if you would pr prevent that, you would make people feel and live longer. So people have challenged over time to say, let's do a trial where we'd, we'd actually help the patient, the ones that are at high risk to, to, to survive longer. And the only trial we have so far is a trial that's that done, has selected the survivors. They've randomized them to CTO-PCI in the month, in, in the, the days following their STEMI, and their primary endpoint was LVEF at four months. They didn't find any difference in the two groups, but does it negate the, the amount of observational data that show that actually these patients, if they have a CTO, they do worse? And maybe if we could open these CTOs, they would do better. It's not on the four-month endpoint on an MRI that we'll be able to get an answer. And the final element is mortality. I can tell you that that's probably the only indication besides STEMI that PCI can save lives. They sent for CTOs. And are we going to have the data? The answer is we will likely never have any never. data on this. Because if you look at decision CTO, which look at harder endpoints, combining that MI, stroke, and revascularization, the trial was null. But it took six years to recruit 800 patients. The reality is that if you look at all the observational data comparing CTO piece success or failure, Success is associated with improved survival compared to failure. And this is consistent among 30 or uh, tw up to 30 observational studies. So how can it be that that study didn't show it? Well, the problem is a better error. It's too small a study. 
If you're looking at a 3.5 baseline mortality and you want to reduce it by 30% or 50% like it's been observed in all these, these observational studies, you need anything between a 3,000 trial to an wow. 8,000 trial powered for mortality. It's never it's gonna possible. happen. So it's therefore, possible. what are we doing? How, what can I say to my patient who's 50 year old showing to me he has no, no not, much, not much symptoms and he's got an LED occlusion. Yeah. He's got ischemia, he's got no symptoms. Well, he's, I expect this guy to live at least 20 to 25 years later and I'm 100% convinced that if I give him, I just separate this interdependence of two coronaries helping each other and providing him and a great flow to that coronary, I will help this guy. And I can rely on strong observational uh, uh, data. It's not because I don't have a trial that I cannot say, well, so far what we can say is that evidence-based medicine is not only a uh, trial. So do you think registries will help? I think registries are very important. It's like the evidence-based medicine is not about a cookbook. It's not about Randomization. only randomized clinical trial. It's being a good doctor, using all the available data, and making a reasonable assessment of what's going to be best for your patient. And the reality is that we've gone too far in letting even the worst of the worst trials speak over the good observational data. And I think it's one of the problem that's been poisoning the CTO world over the last few years is like two small trials uh, conducted with composite endpoints that are diluting the real effect that we're looking, using surrogate markers instead of clinical markers, and all of it being negative. And it's all of saying, you know what? What we've seen in observational data doesn't doesn't hold. Oh, but wait, I mean, it's but you cannot replicate it in a in randomized fashion. So it's um, it's hard. So you, the best evidence you have is suggesting benefit. And you That's cannot replicate it in randomization. Exactly. Well, it's going to be a very interesting session. I'm looking forward for the talk. Uh, thank you for joining, Stefan, and uh, for the insightful about the CTO. Uh, please watch this videos and other on CVI YouTube channel. This is Shad Reyes from uh, Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Thank you.